back with some more transfer news from Manchester United. Um, yeah, I did say I did say I was gonna come back to uh, you know the club that I love so much after they put me through so much pain and hurt on Wednesday um, against Burnley, and they have been doing for a little while now. But we must talk about them um, because they are big news. We are always big news, always in the news because everyone wants to know what's going on. Um, and it's a bit laughable, if I'm going to be completely honest. It's a bit laughable. We need a striker. We need a striker desperately. Now, some points, as I've said in the past, you have to look at it and say... Is it just newspapers, media, trying to get clicks by adding Man United's name to any and any, every story? They know that the fans are very annoyed. They know that Man United are the butt of many jokes at the moment. So any kind of link to a player that might be somewhat unfancied, you know is going to create conversation, it's going to generate clicks, um, and which is the... The, a lot of the, the reasons for certain articles you have to question some of the links that you hear we've been linked with I mean over the past two summers uh, past two windows so summer and January we've been linked with probably over 100 players and we signed three which tells you a lot tells you a lot that's many most of those links are nothing but tabloid press Fake news, you would say. Fake news. Solskjaer comes out and says... Because <laughs> the thing is, you don't hear about it before. But Solskjaer comes out and says, we are looking to replace um, Marcus Rashford to, to get someone to fill in Marcus Rashford in the short term, etc, etc. The next day, we're linked with two Premier... Well, I'm going to say Premier League flops. I'm going to say Premier League flops. One had a very good season in the Premier League. The other never cut it in the Premier League. Um, and you have to ask, where has this come from? Is there any truth in this? Do these players fit the profile of the type of players that we have gone for and that Solskjaer has, uh, has said and stated that we are looking at? Do these players fit that profile? There's certain players who we've been linked with in the past, Mandzukic for example, that hasn't happened for, and the main reason being that he doesn't fit the profile in terms of age, etc., of the players we're trying to go for. Yet we're linked to players of a similar age bracket, you're gonna say, a similar age bracket. So you have to question, yeah, you're gonna to have to question Man United's recruitment, which I guess everyone does initially. Why are we going after that? That's how you know XYZ is the issue. Or you have to question the truth of the the, uh, the report. I would. I'm going to question both. I'm going to question both. So the two players I'm talking about, of course, uh, one being Islam Slimani, and the other Odion Igalo. Now, Igalo, as I said, had a good season in the Premier League, and he really tailed off after that. The, after he had, actually had a good season, um, Man United were in for him. Louis Van Gaal wanted him, but I believe the fee he was having a, the, the, the fee that. Watford wanted all the wages that he wanted was way above what we were willing to offer and in the end of course he went to China where he was is earning handsome, um, handsome sum of money Isan Slimani who's currently on loan at Monaco from Leicester couldn't, can't get in the Leicester team fourth choice striker hence he's out on loan he's having a you know decent season seven Seven league goals in, in 13 games. Um, Igalo, their Shanghai uh, Chinese season has just finished. And he finished with... Uh, sorry, one second. He finished with 10 goals in 17 games. Um, neither of them are ripping up their leagues. And both have kind of shown that they didn't have what it takes to really cut in the Premier League at Watford and Leicester. But they're going to cut at Man United? Is that what you're telling me? And when I say that, I'm talking about the media. Are you being realistic with this one? Man United are after Islam Simani and Odion Igalo. Now, of course, 
because they are possible loan deals and people know that we want to replace Marcus Rashford in the short term, it gives them scope and it gives them the ability to link us to many loan deals, which I think they're doing. I don't think there's much truth in this story. Um, it, it would When I saw Slim Miner, I was thinking, he ain't young. He ain't Premier League proven. He ain't even proven anywhere, really and truly, at, at the top level. What what profile is he fitting that Solskjaer's looking for? It doesn't make sense. Igalo, granted he had a good season in the Premier League. Then he gone to China, so it's not a case of he's flopped. But really? Because th this is, comes completely out of left field. If they, if they brought back Mandzukic again, you might say, oh, maybe. Or Lorente, who they mentioned in the summer, you might say, oh, okay. But this is completely out of left field. Never heard of it before. But what it is, Man United are looking for loan deals. And it's, it's a possibility that Slimani's agent or Igalo's agent may have contacted Solskjaer, Ed Woodward or whoever and said, uh, well, you, I heard you're looking for a striker on loan. I've got my striker. And once that happens, the newspaper jumps on it. Because what happens, the agent has to contact the newspaper or whoever and say, yeah, we've been in contact with Man United about um, Slimani going on loan. When in reality it was you contacting them and them say no. I can't see those deals happening. But what I do have to say in terms of our transfer strategy is that, okay, we were in for Erling Haaland. Didn't get him. But that, that was clearly our only plan for January. We were willing to go through the rest of the season without getting any forwards. Maybe. And I, I'm going to do a video on this where we're talking more about the um, what's happening in the back room of Manchester United, upstairs you might say. Maybe the funds are not available for a, a forward of outside of Holland who had a 20 million release clause. If you're talking the likes of Dembele, Sancho, whose fees are going to be upwards of 60 million towards 100 million pounds. Maybe that money is not available in the, um, in the January and will be available in the summer. So Holland would have been a, a very good option because of the price. And we didn't get him, so we had no other option, no other plan. Because the way we're tr trying to structure the Bruno Fernandes deal, it's like, well, we're really short of money. We're really short of cash. So we don't have enough money to go and buy another you know, premier um, forward. But I just find it so bizarre that you're only now going after a forward because Rashford's injured. Imagine Rashford got injured just after January and we're out for, him for the rest of the season with no chance of replacement. That's the kind of incompetent strategies we're dealing with at Manchester United. We sold Lukaku and Sanchez, or so, loaned out Sanchez in the summer. Lost two forwards, no matter how good or bad they were, we lost two forwards. Players that can play in the forward position. Didn't replace them in the summer and were content not to get any kind of attacking replacement. Whether it's directly or indirectly. For the rest of the season. That for me is absolutely bizarre. But as far as Igalo and Slimani go, I ain't having them. And I can't see social having them. Um, so nice try. Nice try, media. Get people a bit... <laughs> a bit um, angst. Oh, look at this, look at them. Look. Get the rivals talking. You did it. Well done, well done. I applaud you for that. But come on, let's be real. We're not getting Slimani. And we're not getting Igalo. Famous last words as soon as the video's finished. We're, it would have been announced that we signed both of them. <laughs> on loan with an obligation to buy or some nonsense like that. But come on, let's be real. Let's be real. Um, who are we going to buy? I mean, the Bruno Fernandes deal rumbles on. <laughs> it, it really does. It rumbles on. And we are... The talk is that we're still in talk with them. The, the, the communication lines have not broken. But we're really scribbling over maybe five to ten million pounds that 
we were told by Bruno Fernandes' agent that Sporting are willing to, will be accepting 50 million euros and that the number that Sporting are now telling us that they want is closer to 60 million euros. Um, it's a belief that there's a clause in Bruno Fernandes' contract, which he had in the summer. If anyone bids above 35 million, they have to pay his agency, who which he has a stake in, 5 million euros. Since he signed a new contract, that valuation, that benchmark has been raised to 50 million. So the agent tells Man United 50 million will get him because Sporting don't want to pay 5 million because Sporting haven't got 5 million to, to, to pay. Sporting are saying, nah, 60 million. Um, it could still happen. It could still happen, but I ain't holding my breath. I've, I'm done holding my breath when it comes to Man United and transfers. In the summer, it took us a month to complete each deal. If we are to get Bruno Fernandes, it's taken a month to complete this deal. Six months if you want to include the whole summer and everything that's happened in between. But it is what it is. As far as Igalo and Slimani um, go, no chance. Not happening. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you soon. Thank you.